Hey y'all, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be working on Mark's uh, Twisted V Twin Garages Pro V motor. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to shim the crank in the cam. Uh, so sit back, relax, and uh, we will show you what's going on. Alright guys, I want to start out by saying, or telling you why it's important, especially on these high-performance motors, uh, but actually every motor, uh, you need to shim at least your crank and your cam, uh, but mainly the crank. Uh, if you have too much end play in the crank, it will throw where the, on the journal where the connecting rod connects, it will throw that alignment off, and where, it, where the bearing wraps around it, it can rock this way and put undue wear on one side of that bearing. So you want to make sure your crank is shimmed correctly so that it won't have that movement. That's why it's important to uh, shim, and shim your crank and your cam. Uh, mainly the cam is for it rides correctly on the lifters, but the crank it's for the bearings on the crank connecting rods don't unevenly wear and wear out and destroy your motor so let's get to it and we'll show you what's going on all right y'all you guys remember mark's engine here twisted v twin garage we got it back from the machine shop and uh he's got the in the intake goes here he's got the intake he's doing some finished polish work on it and everything and uh we're gonna get that going on here but i found an issue after we got it back from the machine shop, I didn't catch it before we sent it out. Uh, I put the closure plate on. These don't take any gaskets. But with the closure plate on and not even torqued, I can barely turn the, the crank. So uh, we're going to, we're going to, you know, it, it goes that far and stops. And goes that far and stops. So, I don't know what's going on with it. Um, it doesn't have the rockers or anything on it. So, we're going to pull this closure plate off and see what we can find. And hopefully it's nothing major. Uh, maybe just a little clearance work on this closure plate or something. But, uh, yeah. So, let me get these bolts out of this closure plate. We'll get it popped off. We'll get our cam crank support uh, ready to go. And we'll... Uh, bring y'all back all right everybody we're back uh, we got the closure plate off got the crank cam crank support uh, put on there and I figured out as soon as I pulled this off what was going on uh, this is an oversight on my on my part but I knew this thing was just going to the machine shop and I knew we'd be opening it back up so this is what the deal is on this adjustable cam it's got these bolts that stick out here or nuts or heads of the bolts that stick out we got to clear the clearance them we got to take material out of here down to about here all the way up you know this this one will have to almost come all the way off this is about three quarters you know we'll have to get that all cleaned out what was going on is one of these bolt heads were between here and that's why we could only turn it that far it was hitting so that's you know that's a good thing um i was thinking that we were going to have to do some cam shimming or cam turning or have this have this surface here machined down uh, because this is an aftermarket uh billet crank and i didn't know what the fitment was in the one of these engines uh, i've never used one of these cranks before so but like i said crisis averted we got this all taken care of uh I will pull this governor shaft out of here also. Uh, yeah, pull that out because I don't want that coming out and dropping in the motor or anything. Uh, I've seen stranger things happen. So let's, uh, I'm going to get set up. I'm going to get these cut out and we'll bring you all back. All right, y'all. Uh, you see, I got the bearing journals and stuff all covered up here. Try to keep some of these small pieces and stuff from going down in them and having to flush them out too bad 
Uh, so, I mean, I will clean it all out after I get done. I just, I don't want it to get down in the bearings. There's needle bearings in here. There's bearings in here. This is the oil pump where the oil pump bolts on. I don't want it getting down in any of those passages. So, uh, I just got my little die grinder cut off wheel thing here. Uh, I don't recommend you take your guards off your off your tools, guys. Uh, I do this. I do this at my own risk. Uh, it's very dangerous, but uh, to get down in here and to see what I'm doing, I had to take take the guard off this time. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started up here, and we'll uh, get this cleaned out. one side done you guys can see that yeah I got down into that little bolt hole there a little bit that'll be all right I'll put a I'll put a little bit of JB weld up in there and we'll pack her full uh, done it on other engines no big deal uh, I might, might take this back this one back just a little bit further and then we'll get over here and get on this one I got a huge mess made there you have it yep got into that one a little bit too uh, I need to take a little rasp here and clean that up smooth it up a little bit uh, but uh, that's that's it that's when you when you put an adjustable cam in these it's kind of what you got to do so I'm gonna fire the air compressor up get this all blown out I'm gonna shoot out a little brake parts cleaner uh, get everything all cleaned up we'll put her back on the engine and See if the engine spins now. Bring you all back. All right, y'all. Got everything all cleaned up here. I'm going to take the bracket off here. Make sure your cam stays in there. There's that. This is a little snug fit on this crank, so. That's what you want. All right, I'm gonna take a couple bolts, put back in there. We're gonna snug her down. And we're gonna start checking for uh, end play in the crank.
and these do not have gaskets on them so like I said before it's just a little silicone that goes in there little RTV reason that one didn't tighten up oh that's the short bolt that's all right we got spacers we got spacers see <laughs> not a big deal all right got that in there all tightened down no gap around it so Next thing we got to do is check for end play on the crank. I always tap them that way, get a, seat it all the way in the block that way. I'll get my dial indicator and everything set up here, and we'll get this. Uh, we'll we'll push it this way and see how much uh, end play we have in the crank. Uh, I got to look back at my notes. Uh, I believe it uh, it's ten thousandths end play or less than 10 thousandths end play on these don't quote me on that um i don't have my i don't have my uh my note cards here uh there in the house i was doing some other work some other research so uh but uh yeah let's get that all set up and we'll do the end end play on the crank all right y'all you can hopefully you can see this good enough <coughs> got my dial indicator set up uh but the battery went dead uh, joys of having a digital meter not taking the battery out of it um, but uh, yeah uh, I got my bracket bolted on over here it comes up you know and just set it right on the end of the right on the end of the crank uh, this you can zero this these are nice they can zero them out just like a regular dial one uh, I wish I had a dial one right now but I don't but uh, yeah, uh, what I'll do is I'll go on the other side of the motor, and once I get the battery, you know, we did push the crank all the way in. I'll go on the other side of the motor, we'll push it this way, and we'll see what the end play is. And I believe it's 10 thousandths on the crank, also. Like I said, don't got my notes out here, so uh, we'll figure out what the, what the end play is, and then we'll uh, buy shims to match uh, to take up the difference. So, yeah. There you have it. Uh, I'm going to run to the store right now. Get me another couple batteries here. Uh, Alright y'all. Uh, I'm back from the store. I got the batteries and everything from my dial indicators. You can see I got it set up on the end of the crank here. All zeroed out. Uh, I thought I was going to be able to show you all how to do it with the using the closure cover. The bearings on this thing are just too tight. You know, which, I, which is good. Uh, the races are too tight on the crank to be able to slide it back and forth easily. So we're going to use the, the tool that I got to, to do this with. Um, it's to set the, you, it's to support the cam and the crank, but it's also to set your clearances on your uh, end plays for both the cam and the crank. So all you got to do is, like I said, I hope you guys can see that that's zeroed out. You know, move it forward. Move it back, move it forward, move it back, you know, so, yeah, we're, uh, we're pretty far out, so, uh, they call, they're calling for, uh, the two thousandths, or, yeah, two, two twenty, yeah, two thousandths of an inch, uh, end play. I think that's what it was. Uh, I was wrong with the ten thousandths, but uh, anyways, it looks like I'm going to have to get probably at least a at least a twenty thousand shim, which any you know yep. So all right, y'all. I looked it up. The uh, end play they're calling for is two thousandths of an inch which ain't very much but uh, I grabbed me some filler gauges here and I'm gonna slip, slip them in here between this tool and the crank here and we got about five thousandths 
four thousandths, five thousandths. And we're going to call it five. So that was a twenty thousandths. So we're going to go roughly with a twenty two thousandths here. If I can get this crank pushed back over now. All right, something's changed here. Let me uh, do a little check in here and see what's going on. I can't get it to go back to zero now unless I bump my, I don't think I bumped my dial indicator, but I mean, I've only got 20 thousands or 10 thousands play now. Or I had 20 something before so all right let me do a little check in here I'll let you know what, what I found all right guys there we go now it's now it's back to what it's supposed to be where where I had it at okay it what happened was the engine was right up on the edge of the compression stroke and I must have rotated it just enough to to, to bind it in there so I rotated the motor over there and got her free but um, so where are we at here uh, 22 thousandths let's see if we can get a 22 thousandths in there and see what uh, I mean that that cranks barely moving now we got three and a half thousandths see if I got a 23 thousandths yep there's a 23 thousandths stick that up in between there well we got one and a half thousandths now so I'm going to look up and see what uh, shims are available still, and uh, we'll probably have to go with like a 23 thousandths. I don't want to make it too tight for when things heat up and expand, so uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go with a 22 thousandths, not 23 thousandths. Is that what I said? I don't know. Anyways, that's it. Um, I'm going to get you turned around here, and we'll do the same thing for this cam here, but I need to write that down that I need... 22,000 uh, shim so all right or I guess they call them thrust washers or whatever but anyways shut the camera off get that rope down and we'll bring you back and show you how we're doing the cam all right y'all got it all set up here on the cam uh, if I didn't say it on when I was doing the crank when you're setting this kind of thing up here this dial indicator and that you want to be a straight on to whatever you're measuring as possible if it's twisted either up or down or left or right it'll give you a, a false skew on your your uh, measurement so try to get it as you know close as eyeball can tell so but there we go uh, all the spec on the uh, cam shim or cam end play is between three and five thousandths of an inch so uh, let me pull this cam out here and we've got 35 thousandths yep 35 thousandths so that would mean we need a roughly a 33 right 32 32 thousandths shim uh, feeling weak today so yeah, so let me uh, let me grab the uh, filler gauges here again. I know I need a thirty thousandth shim. Uh, I'm just going to order a thirty thousandth shim, 
and uh, we'll be done. So, all right, we'll get set up, and do the next thing here, and we'll get y'all, bring y'all back. All right, y'all. Uh, for you, it's just been a little bit of time. I uh, finally got the shims in for the. Uh, this is for the crank, and well, that one's for the crank too, and then that one's for the cam. But it's been a couple weeks, actually a few weeks, since uh, I actually started videoing this. Uh, unfortunately, I my digital uh, dial indicator, the batteries went dead. It's no big deal. I mean, basically all I'm gonna do is take those shims, put them in, and then use the dial indicator like I did to find out how much shim I need. Uh, I'm just gonna check the end play and make sure that it's within the, the tolerances that we want, and that's all there is to it. So. Um, sorry, uh, I need to get this video out. It's been sitting too long, uh, but there's going to be more coming on this. Uh, after I get the shims on the crank and the cam, we're going to be working on the oil pump. Uh, I'm going to show you how to modify it to up the oil pressure. And the reason we want to do the oil pressure or up the oil pressure is, especially on these high RPM motors, is to get more oil up to the top end and you know where it needs to be. So. Check out that video, it's coming out, uh, probably another week or so, but uh, it will be out soon. So, appreciate it y'all. Remember, comment, hit that like button, share it out for me. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Click the all for you get all the notifications, everything we do out here in the garage. And uh, don't forget about my Sunday live stream, Sunday nights, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We talk about uh, a little bit of everything. We talk about motors, we talk about tractors, cars, cooking, you know, all that stuff. So, appreciate y'all. Really do appreciate y'all, you know, watching these videos. And I really like the comments and stuff. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent. You know, it is what it is. But I read, them, read every single one and I try to respond to every single one. So, y'all have a good evening and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.